college engines. In this video, we're going to provide an overview of uh, engine bottom end inspection procedures. We'll touch on uh, the safety aspects, uh, there were special tools required, and the procedures themselves. For safety concerns during these processes, you should be aware of uh, pinch points, particularly when rotating the crankshaft in the engine block, uh, heavy components such as the crankshaft and head engine block, and sharp edges. Uh, machine surfaces can have a sharp enough edge to cut you. The special tools required uh, for, for these processes will be a bore gauge, a set of uh, outside micrometers, a dial indicator and magnetic base, a micrometer vise, a set of soft jaws for the bench vices, a torque wrench. Uh, these are either termed telescoping gauges or snap gauges, feeler gauges, and a precision straight edge. Prior to doing any measurements, you should give everything a thorough visual inspection. I check the bolt holes and surfaces and look for any obvious damage. This will prevent you from wasting time uh, doing precision measurements on a component that clearly can't be reused. For example, a five second glimpse at this tells you that connecting rod is bent and this assembly is not usable. Prior to doing any precision measurements, some preliminary cleaning may be required. For example, on the cylinder block deck, before we can check it to make sure it's flat and true, we need to uh, remove any gasket, debris, things like that. And in the case of a piston or connecting rod assembly, potentially there's carbon and varnish that would need to be removed before we can make uh, accurate measurements. We're going to check the main bearing journals for size and roundness by checking them uh, vertically and horizontally. And we'll also check them to make sure they're cylindrical and have not taken on a barrel shape or a taper or an hourglass shape by measuring them at more than one place along their length. Repeat this process for the rod journals. Once you have all of your sizes written down, you can compare them to specifications. For the, the basis of our bore measurements, first we're going to measure the piston size. The way we'd like to get that done is to install soft jaws in the vise. Take your piston, set the connecting rod between the soft jaws and the piston resting on the top. Just snug the assembly like that. And we take a micrometer, in this case it's a 3 to 4 inch micrometer, and we will measure across the skirt at 90 degrees to the wrist pin. Okay, and we now have our piston measurement. Okay, we're going to go through the bore gauge setup procedure here. Uh, for this particular engine, we're going to select a 3.5 to 3.8 inch extension. Uh, we put the lock ring on it, thread it into the base of this unit, like this. Okay, that gets that in the approximate range we want it. We insert a dial indicator in the top. We're going to watch the indicator here. I'm going to insert this until I get some preload on the gauge. Okay, that ensures that I'll see gauge movement as soon as I have plunger movement at the bottom. Alright, now that's roughly assembled. We're going to take the uh, micrometer with the uh, piston size set and locked. And we're going to insert this in here. And 
And we are going to perform our rough adjustment. I'm going to shorten that up a little bit. Okay. Now I want this so that I've compressed the plunger in this end a little bit. All right. I, and I need to, I can tell it's compressed because again, I see gauge movement. All right. Once I have that set, I rotate this dial. Sorry. I rotate this dial to zero. And now this is calibrated. Now that we have the gauge calibrated, we can take it to measure the cylinder bars. If we take the, the uh, gauge and insert it like this on an angle, and when we tip it back towards straight, you'll see that the needle uh, deflects. We want to get the smallest number on the, uh, on the gauge. That's the one we'll record that will show the true bore size. We need to measure the cylinder at, uh, uh, as the same axis as, as the crankshaft and at 90 degrees to that axis to determine if the cylinder is round. We also need to measure at the top and at the bottom to see how much taper the cylinder has. As far as interpreting the gauge reading, we see here that it's, this uh, needle is two thousandths of an inch from the zero. That would mean that the cylinder bore in this case is two thousandths of an inch larger than the piston size. Here we're going to demonstrate the process of checking the main bore uh, alignment. Uh, we need the straight edge and the feeler gauge for this. You notice the, feel, the uh, straight edge rather has one machine surface on it. We need to make sure that's in good condition. We're going to check the, the uh, bore alignment both in this direction and in this direction. We'll do that by setting the uh, straight edge in place and attempting to slide the feeler gauge underneath. If the feeler gauge goes in with clearance, that would indicate misalignment. Okay, so we'll have a demonstration. In this process, we're going to check the uh, straightness of the crankshaft. We're going to do that uh, in this case by putting a bearing in the front and rear of the engine and setting the crankshaft in that gap. This can also be done on the bench using V-blocks. So we've got the crankshaft in place. Set the dial indicator of the magnetic base in place and lock it down and we'll zero the indicator okay and we'll rotate the shaft and look for out of round or out of straight In order to check the main bearing bore diameter, we first need to reinstall and torque the main bearing caps. Once the main caps are installed, we can use a telescoping gauge uh, to find the inside size.
Now that we have the size on the telescoping gauge, we can transfer it to the micrometer for measurement. Using the straight edge and feeler gauge, check the deck surface for flatness.